So I mentioned on my Facebook that I wanted to go ahead and cross stitch again. My favorite form of cross stitch is counted cross stitch because it's a blank canvas. I really don't care for printed cross stitch or things that already have a picture in them where you cross stitch around them because I feel like the work is sufficient without it. If I can see the picture, I don't really care to finish the design if that makes any sense. I could do other things other than cross stitch. I could do ribbon embroidery, kind of cross stitch. Right now there's this um, chain stitch, all that stuff, French knots. Right now there's a new form of cross stitch. I think it's called pole cross stitch. Um, it reminds me of latch hooking, which it might be, but I think it's a method where you puncture versus pull. I'm not really sure, so I'll get into different forms later on my blog if I keep on going along with this. This is a pastime thing that I definitely used to love doing. When I was younger, I didn't grow up with Nintendo or cable, so I had to find a way to pass the time. I had um, limited amounts of videos, and basically my forms of entertainment were books and sewing. So that being said, um, it gave me a real segue into my life that is more creative versus technical. So anyways, um, I am going to be working on this which is called Mediterranean Flavors and this design is by Susan Winget and it is from the Dimensions line and it is basically Merlot Chablis or olive oil and garlic. Really adorable, totally cute. So anyways, there's this new hoop that I saw. I didn't see anything quite like this, like a long plasticky hoop. So I kind of wanted to try this. Um, I prefer them over wooden ones personally. A pair of embroidery scissors, which they may have had something like this, but I didn't own a pair as a kid. Um, I don't remember embroidery thread being like on here like this. Like I remember back when I first started getting into embroidery, you had to buy the floss separate from the from the picture that you were sewing on. But now I see that it comes on a card. They started incorporating these long ago when I was a kid, um, but they were all like big balls of floss that you had to undo the big ball and do the undo the knot. I got some embroidery needles. You don't need tapestry needles. Those are way too big and will ruin your picture. I'm sorry for the shaking. And then you have this little picture. See where you start off with the blank canvas. And the end result is going to be a 17 by 12 centimeter picture. So the thing comes with a sheet of instructions before you start out on how to get started. And you basically have the full picture. So you basically count and follow along and you kind of find your count by the very center. See how this diagram is folded into fourths? So your starting point is going to be the center of that diagram, and your starting point here will be the center of this. So basically you're transferring the picture, you see, from here to here. So you're ignoring the dimension pretty much, but you are transferring the count to here. So anyways, um, you have the color code all set up for you, so you know exactly where the colors go. The symbols that you see on here tell you the color. So you have a little star that means you're going to use red. So hence the little stars that you see in this tomato will be red. This black outline, you're actually going to be hand sewing all that black outline to bring the picture forward, especially for the words like Merlot, olive oil, and Chablis, and garlic. So that's basically what you have to start off with. So you have all your stitches on the back and they give you some good strong points to get these stitches started. Now the only thing, like, being that I'm older and I don't have as much time to sit around and sort of think about each stitch or whatever, um, it does get kind of tricky. Luckily I do know how to do this, so I'll show it for you maybe a little faster than these instructions would. Also, if this is your first one, don't expect it to be better than better. My very first cross stitch had some issues in it, so it's just the way it goes. You just learn. And, um you're getting started, you need to prepare your fabric. So in order to prevent your fabric from, uh, you know, the edges from fraying, you need to find the center of your fabric and mark it with this thread. So that's gonna get you started because you're not gonna worry about the outer part of your fabric being that it is woven and it can come undone because you've got your weft, 
and you've got your warp. Your weft goes from right to left, so it's easy to remember, and your warp is straight up and down. So that being said, the pull can just work it off by pulling thread. So as it ages, that'll happen, so you always want to start from the center. So what you want to do is get the fabric as tight as possible, stretch it out as tight as possible. As you get a little tighter, you can continue tightening this, but the last thing you want to do is work on a surface that's going to be constantly moving up and down. It may loosen as you, you know, obviously as you pull, so you want to be careful not to pull too hard um, when you're going up and down with the stitches because you also want them to lay on top of the fabric really, really beautifully. So tighter isn't better. You want it to look embroidered, embossed, and forward. So the first part of this cross stitch we're going to be doing is the center. And the center, the very center, is this V symbol. So you go down here, you find the V symbol, and the very first color we're going to be working with is yellow. So you go ahead and you take your, your card and you see that it has these little codes right there, one, two, two, nine, six. Now I've made errors in counting cross stitch before picking up, you know, the slightly wrong shade and whatnot. It's all good. I mean, if you really hate a color, you can always change it. Once again, we're starting off with a pitcher or a vase. So it's yellow, but if you're going to change out a color, just make sure that you have enough of the next color or whatever. These numbers are super important. They're going to help you in case you need to buy more embroidery and more embroidery thread later on. So 12296 is the code for this particular shade of yellow. So we're going to begin with this. All right. So it does help to have embroidery bobbins and you can always get those and I'll show those to you soon. But you have six strands of embroidery thread. Um, basically, if you did friendship bracelets as a kid, you're familiar with embroidery thread and all of the little strands it has. So the best thing to do is start by working this, um, you know, make sure it's laying flat, up and down. And what you're going to do is you're going to take it apart. Now, different kits will advise different thicknesses. So what we're going to do, since each piece has six, what I'm going to do is divide it into three. Some kits will advise you to divide it into th three, which is actually pretty heavy, but you can do three. Um, for this particular kit, I'm guessing it provided only an X amount, so I would not advise that unless you had backup embroidery floss to do up to three. Um, this particular kit advises one. You're not really going to have much of a look on one, but since um, I'm pretty familiar with codes and stuff like that, I feel okay to go back to the store later. I want to do two to get the picture resolution I want. So we're going to divide it so we have three pieces out of this one piece. Some embroidery kits would advise you to mark your center point with a pen. And if this is your first one, I'd say go for it. So what you're going to want to do is come up from the bottom of your very first X. Run the thread completely through. Oops, sorry. It's so hard to cross stitch one-handed. Go back down down so you're going to be crossing at an angle you're going to go back down pull the needle through now a lot of people make the mistake of not putting their x's side by side when you're doing a kind of cross stitch like this you want it to look saturated um, like a full painting so you want these stitches side by side to make up for the picture you could choose to separate them if you want. It's just not going to look elegant and you're going to need much more fabric to do that more than they've provided in the kit. Now you can always buy cross stitches you make yourself and do it any way you want. That's a lot more advanced, however, to go that route and I'll probably do something like that in the future for you guys. Um, I'm embroidering since I was a little kid, so I've just taken a lot more years off than I've ever taken before almost felt like I hung up my sewing scissors, so to speak, but I'm back, um, shockingly enough to myself. So anyways, um, we're going to continue on with this face. The one thing you do want to remember, however, is if you are at a stopping point, you don't want to start a new stitch where you just stopped because it'll undo that stitch, if that makes sense. So I just stopped right here on this X at the top, so I would not then make an X right here. I'd go to the one beside it so it doesn't come undone. 
All right, so we have this much done. This is basically like the highlight or so in the very center of the um, of this face picture, whatever. So you can see that is already coming to life. But what we have to do now is do a couple stitches of this. Of this oh, I'm so sorry. What we have to do now is a couple stitches of this lighter color over here. So what we like to, what I like to do, um, is not leave any long strings along the back side by drawing the fabric or by drawing, yeah, because it's basically going to draw the fabric or kind of pucker it or gather it. So what we have here is all the stitches that were really like neck and neck tight together. So I'm going to knot this and start over. So that's my best advice to getting a very clean, clear picture that looks good on the front because if you make too many mistakes in the back, too many very overwhelming knots, you draw the thread too far, whatever, it kind of shows through the front once it's framed.